In the never-ending pursuit of higher overclocks and lower temperatures, there's a few things we can do to help our graphics cards out. And one of those things is replacing the stock thermal paste with something a bit better. So what we're gonna to do today is replace the stock thermal compound on a Zotac 1080 Mini with some Thermal Grizzly Conductor Nort, which is a liquid metal type paste, to see just how much that improves it and helps out with our overclocking and temperatures. So let's get into it. All right, so what are we gonna do? How are we gonna get the baseline figures for the before results? What we're gonna do, we've got the Mini in here just looping heaven benchmark. It's been looping for about 25 minutes now. So it should have settled about where it's going to be temperature wise. So it should give us a solid baseline. Now, what I've done as far as settings, I'm just using MSI Afterburner running purely stock out of the box. I haven't touched anything, but the only thing I did do is I set the custom fan curve at 65% and just have it just static at 65% and we'll run that before and after. That way the results aren't skewed by the fan curve mucking around because the temperatures are gonna be lower and I didn't want it to you know, um, affect the end result. So the fan percentage is locked 65% regardless. And so what we're seeing here, it's a little bit all over the place. It seems to bounce between 1772 megahertz on the core and 1860 and it's up and down quite a bit the temperature has settled in at 64 to 65 degrees stock that's uh, obviously with the stock clocks but what i've done i have also had a bit of a play around before recording to just figure out where i think the card is happy overclocked so what we'll do is i'll put up the stock clocks here and the results and then what i'll do is i'll put the overclock on it and we'll come back and we'll check the results then and then we'll know exactly our stock and overclock results with the stock thermal paste and we'll do the change and then we'll come back and do some more afterwards so we'll see you guys in a minute all right so we're back with the overclock results on the stock paste so what i did via afterburner was just uh, maximize the core voltage percent to plus 100 we put the power limit to 120 and I put the temp limit to 92 degrees. And then what I did was I added another 120 megahertz on the core and 250 megahertz on the memory, which trans, uh, translated to a core clock of around 1947 to 1989 and a memory clock of 52, 58 megahertz. And the temperature went up uh, from what it was before up to the 68, 69 degrees and it's plateauing there. So I think that's given us what we need as a base figure on the stock paste. So let's go ahead and swap it out with some conductor naught and then come back and see how it fares. But before I do anything else, I really need to fix this wobbly badge. I can't handle it. So removing the cooler from the Zotac 1080 Mini is actually really straightforward. Once you flip it over, there's only six bolts that you need to unscrew to remove, and then you'll be able to pry the actual PCB away from the cooler. Just keep in mind that there's two little cables that need to be unplugged as well. So with the cooler off, we get our first look at the Zotac stock thermal paste. And you can see that they were pretty liberal with it. And in order to get it all off, I actually had to make it look much worse before it started to look any better.
Just make sure that you're careful of these thermal pads when you're cleaning off the compound. They'll need to stay in place. And it's now time to put on the conductor nort. So one thing to keep in mind with this stuff is that a little bit goes a long, long way. And you can always add more on afterwards, but it's very difficult to take off. So just keep that in mind. Just be careful not to spill any of the conductor nort across the side of the die onto those little resistors because it is conductive after all, and that could cause issues. If you feel the need, you could put down some electrical tape or something just to protect it, but I was pretty confident that I wouldn't spill any. This is a Chucky Beat production. All right guys, so we're back. We've done the thermal replacement and we've been letting heaven loop for about 40 minutes now. Now, running stock clocks, so equivalent to what the card would be doing out of the box with no interference from MSI, apart from setting fan at 65% and leaving it, we saw the maximum temperatures drop to 54 to 55, which is a 10 degree drop over the stock thermal paste. Now that's not the most important thing or the most interesting thing. The most interesting thing is the fact that the core clocks ranged between 1860 and 1873 megahertz, whereas before they didn't reach that high. So we actually gained 88 megahertz, which is a huge improvement because remember, we're not, we're not um, instructing the card to do anything else. It's doing that itself because the temperatures are more under control. So to gain almost 100 megahertz overclock and drop 10 degrees on the stock profile is amazing. When we look at the overclock settings, however, it's equally as interesting. So what we had was the maximum temperature range between 59 and 60 degrees. So that was a 12 degree drop over the stock paste on the OC profile. Now, the other thing is the core clock was a lot more stable and actually reached a slightly higher frequency as well. With the conductor naught on the OC profile, we ranged between 1987 and 2012 megahertz, which is a 48 megahertz improvement over the stock paste OC profile. So you can see that replacing the stock thermal paste with some liquid metal or even a higher quality um, non-conductive paste is really, really beneficial. Now, the other important thing to keep in mind is performing a thermal paste replacement on your graphics card may void the warranty. Some manufacturers um, don't like you removing the cooler, and some are fine with it. So if you're considering doing this, you need to make sure what the implications are for your particular graphics card. So there you go guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I was kind of expecting these results because I have been using Thermal Grizzly's Conductor Nort for a while now. I replaced the paste on my 1080 Aorus back there and saw a huge drop on that. And also I've delitted and replaced Thermal Paste on a lot of CPUs and seen incredible improvements in those as well. So if you liked the video, give it a like. If you haven't already, please subscribe. And make sure you keep an eye on the channel because I frequently update videos, uh, reviews, and things like this. So uh, I'd like to see you here again, and I'll catch you in the next video.